Lee Moriarty versus CM Punk. MJF comes out in what Punk himself later described as Larry David's pajamas, which is the best description I have. So he's on commentary here. So they're doing the uh, Dynamite Diamond Ring gimmick. I think it's a winner is coming, but... Uh, no, the the uh, battle royal is next week. Excuse me, I stand corrected. Yes, but then the the final match would be the week after. I see, because the battle royal gets down to two. comes down to two, and then they wrestle. Gotcha. So he vows to be the the he won the first two. He vows to be a three time dynamite diamond ring winner. And they're doing this match, and Lee Moriarty is whipping Punk's ass, not in a spectacular, violent way, but he's outworking him on the mat. He's a step ahead of him when they do high spots and. MJF is burying Punk for it, and the more I watched this, the more I thought, you know what? MJF is right. Punk. That's not- the point. <laughs> yes. That's the whole storyline. does line. not look good tonight. But he's right, but at the same time, Punk has never lost. So it's not like the storyline is making CM Punk look weak. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like this is being built up where CM Punk faces Lee Moriarty, MJF does some sort of distraction, Lee Moriarty wins, all that bullshit. CM Punk is, in fact, taking a long time to defeat the Lee Moriarty's and the QT Marshalls of the world, but he's beating them. Mm-hmm. So you could you could argue that MJF has a point, but you know Punk's also got his own comeback, which is I'm still winning. Like it's taken a while, but I I'm not losing. I like the storyline. Maybe if I find storyline as a match, no one thought Lee Mori- Moriarty was going to beat CM Punk. Until the very end. There, there were a couple of near falls at the very end where they bought. But for the most part, it was, I don't know, 12 minutes of, of, of an apathetic crowd. And uh, they bought a couple of Moriarty's near falls. And finally, Punk does a power spot. He hurt Moriarty up onto his shoulders with the GTS. Giant pop for that, and CM Punk wins. See, I wouldn't say it was... If the match was 12 minutes, I would say this crowd was, was uh, pretty dead for about six minutes. But uh, they worked the match well enough that uh, the last four or five minutes, they were into this match. And I'm not sure what the move was, because I didn't write it down. But uh, Lee Moriarty hit a move, and Punk waited until the last second. He Bobby fished it here almost. Yes. And, uh, and the fans, they popped for that spot. And I can't sit here and say that they believed that Lee Moriarty pinned CM Punk because, you know, that's a lot of people. But for sure, there were people in the crowd that thought that Lee Moriarty pinned CM Punk. And uh, that's pretty impressive if you can even get a few people to believe that Lee Moriarty pinned CM Punk here. It was good wrestling. So MJF buries Punk more for struggling with these matches. Has a line about how you say that you're the best in the world. The only thing you're the best at is trying to get into Britt Baker's pants. And you look at amused like Britt would be if you got into her pants. And this is the line that leads to the line about Larry Davis pajamas. And he declares, I, yeah, I, I had a hard time with QT Marshall and Lee Moriarty, but they're great wrestlers. They're better than you, MJF, and you know it. And MJF laughs this off. He says they're going to be in Long Island, New York next week, his hometown. In Long Island, he's going to be better than Roddy Piper in Portland, Bret Hart in Canada, or even CM Punk in Chicago. And even before he gets to Punk's name, Punk is openly laughing at this. Which I liked. And uh, finally, MJF addresses Punk's dog, Larry, who apparently travels the country with him. If I were you, he says, I wouldn't bring that disgusting, flea-ridden maggot of a dog around anymore. Because if you do, I'll put Larry to sleep. And Punk does the only right thing. This was too much. He goes to kill this man. I always love when there's one line that sets people off. He's going to kill the dog. Adultery was not enough to set off CM Punk. Adultery was obviously joking. No one thinks CM Punk's trying to seduce Britt Baker by putting her over on TV. Well, quite frankly, if if someone were doing a promo with me and they made some comment about my wife, or they claimed they were going to kill my cat, I mean... Like, you hate your cat, though. No, I don't hate the wolf. I love the wolf. He's the last wolf standing. But the point is... Like, I'm not going to get more angry about the wolf line because it's ridiculous. MJF is not going to go backstage and kill his dog. That's preposterous. I don't but know. But that set him off. Wrestlers have done stranger things. They have? Yes. And going and killing a guy. There's never been one, not one time in the history of wrestling is some bloke went backstage and killed someone's dog. Big boss man. Oh, come on. That wasn't backstage anyway. Is it a kitchen somewhere? <laughs> yeah, he did. So, anyway, MJF hides behind Wardlow, and there you go. Shivani is interviewing Britt Baker and her crew. He I didn't asked, even know Punk had a dog. 
This was, a, this was an addition to the storyline. He's mentioned on, in, on promos a few times. He's got to buy kibble for Larry. Thank you for buying ice cream bars. Oh, Larry? Larry the dog. Oh. What do you think Larry was? Uh, I don't know. about Larry Sanders? I thought he might Larry have David? someone who named Larry that ate dog food. How am I supposed to know? But anyway, I wonder if MGF is going to win this uh, this ring again. It's a fascinating question. Well, we'll get to it later. I guess we can bring it up. Wardlow wins a squash in this show later. The story's a guy, and they haven't done anything with Wardlow in a while. The last time he was on, I forget what happened, but I remember, oh, it was when uh, it was when MGF put Wardlow and Spears together as a team, and neither guy seemed happy about it. And I felt like they're leading to the inevitable. They're finally starting the storyline, or, or, you know, kicking the next chapter where Wardlow and MGF break up. So I'm assuming that either in the Battle Royal or against CM Punk, Wardlow is going to screw up and cost MGF the match. Could happen in either of those matches. See, so here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that MJF needs to be defeated anytime soon because it seems like he's going to be going for the title. May well. And uh, when you think about the the diamond ring has played into how many stories over the last two years? Who else right now needs to have that diamond ring? I mean, no. I'm sure you can make it work. But to me, I think that MJF needs to win the diamond ring again. And I think he needs to attempt to use the diamond ring on Hangman Page, just like he used the diamond ring on Darby Allen. And this time it backfires, and he ends up getting defeated. It backfired against Moxley. It, it did, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think there's there's a need to take the ring off of him right now. No, he can have it for another year. It doesn't matter. The longer he has it, the bigger deal it's going to be when he doesn't win it, also or when he loses it. So. So Shivani is interviewing Britt Baker and her crew. He notes Jamie Hader was not present at their Friendsgiving last week, asks where she was. She says, well, I was having a great match in the TBS tournament. Which Britt says, yeah, which you lost. And Jamie is nice back at her. Yeah, you also lost to Thunder Rose once upon a time. So Britt tries to make peace. She promises Jamie Hader we're going to shot versus Riho at Dynamite. And if anything is left of Riho after that match, then, then Riho will get the title shot against Britt that she earned on Rampage. See, these people are saying Wardlow as well, but here's the deal, everybody. The reason Wardlow won a match on this show, to me, is because Wardlow is going to be facing CM Punk, and Punk is going to beat him that on the way too. to MJF. Because uh, Tony had it on his pad. Remember that pad they had? The, uh, all yes. the matches? The notorious it, Tony Khan it, it pad. It had CM Punk versus Wardlow gotcha. on the pad. And at the time, I was like... Why the fuck are we having CM Punk versus Wardlow? Well, now it makes total sense why we would have CM Punk versus Wardlow yes. because the feud is CM Punk and MJF. So I don't think he's winning the diamond ring. He could do it next year, but I don't think we need to muddy the waters of CM Punk and MJF right now by having Wardlow screw MJF or whatever. I don't like it. Maybe it could work, but I wouldn't do it. I always talk about this guy's speed. And not only was he running fast, I don't know if you guys know anything about physics. Oh, educate us. But when one guy is going really fast one direction and hits a stationary man, that's bad. When one guy is running one direction and the other guy is running at him and they they clonk into each other, that's more bad. If Darby Allen leaves the tunnel at 2 p.m. at 30 miles an hour. He left the tunnel at 2 p.m. and he hit this guy at 159. <laughs> he actually went backwards in time. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.